What's up? It's Ed Park, aka Togrim. Today we're going to look at the KV-1. This is the Tier 5 Soviet heavy tank. It's one of the most popular Tier 5 heavy tanks in the game, and it's because it's an all-arounder. It has a really good selection of guns, good armor for its tier, and the really only downside of the tank is it's not particularly fast, and when you try to turn, it's a little bit sluggish and stiff. But, you know, the armor and the gun are big pluses. So, in getting in the match here, I look at the composition and the tiers. I can see that there are two Hellcats. These are tank destroyers with good camouflage rating, so there's no freaking way that I'm going to go into the forest on the east side of the map. I decided to go along the uh, right flank here into the open. And you can see that I'm tier 5, and these there are some tier 6 tanks in here, so I'm the middle tier tank, and that there are no Arties. Now, obviously, if there are Arties, you, know, you have to adjust your playstyle accordingly. You can't sit in the same spot for a long time because you will get targeted and blown up. And I should also mention, in my last video about the British Tier 4 medium tank, the Matilda, I got feedback from several of you that I should be using consumables. And my original approach was to use mounted equipment and then get the consumables later. But having played with consumables now after this video, I totally agree. Um, get the consumables first, get your mounted equipment when you can afford it. So this is pretty funny. I managed to hit that light right before that medium tank cross faces. So I'm running the 85 millimeter gun. This is my favorite on this tank. Uh, it does pretty good alpha damage of 160, really good alpha damage, and has 120 penetration, so it can reliably penetrate uh, most tanks around its tier. And the rate of fire is pretty good. It's uh, 12 rounds per minute uh, or a five second loading time. The only downside is the gun's not terribly accurate, and I aim it here leading or ahead of where I think that light tank's going to go, and that light tank wisely pulls back behind the building for cover. So I'm angling my tank uh, diagonal to my opponents, and I can't take a shot here because I don't want to hit my friendly tank. So I aim over on this M4, and he wisely pulls away, and then I clip that light right as he goes by. Now, you know, because the gun has a 5 second reload time, you can snipe some shots from a distance. Again, the, the gun's not terribly accurate, but you know, if you miss, you'll be able to fire again after 6 seconds. Now thankfully this heavy pulls back and gives me an open shot on the M4 and a friendly player finishes him off. For heavy tanks, you know, I've heard a good benchmark is to try to aim for 70% accuracy or higher. Uh, I'm currently running like over 71% and it's not as important at this tier, but in higher tiers when you have guns that have really long reload times of like 10 seconds or higher, it's the difference between life or death. So this Cromwell, this is a tier 6 British tank, really good mobility, nice gun. He came back here and flanked us and was trying to pick off a tier 5 tank destroyer. He finishes him there, but we lay down enough damage and burn him down. And then I go ahead and angle my hull diagonally to where I think the opponents are. Uh, if you're not clear what angling is, I provided a video guide with illustrative footage and diagrams, so check that out. I've got that linked in the upper right of this video. And I managed to clip this medium tank as he's going by and I'm backing up a little bit to try to get a field of fire on him. I am using this building on my left to kind of shield me so that I'm not getting shot from too many directions and then right here I make a critical mistake. I'm aiming a little too low and I rush the shot so it misses and so this time I take my time, allow full aim and then finish off that target and then this Hellcat, his armor's paper thin. Um, and I should mention that you know for tanks that have really thin frontal or side armor angling won't necessarily meaningfully help. You know, I would still angle in some situations hoping from a ricochet. But at any rate, I hit that Hellcat before he could pull back around the corner. So now he's one-shot material, and he and I both know this, and he sees me aiming at him, so he pulls back. Now, I'm surrounded by two Hellcats. There's the one on the left who's at full health, and then this friendly Cromwell, this tier 6 medium, rushes in and starts damaging the full HP Hellcat. Now, the rough thing for him is he's in the field of fire for both those Hellcats and they just fry the guy, but thankfully he did enough damage on this Hellcat that I'm able to come over and finish him off. And I'm wiggling around just a little bit here to get that guy's gun moving around in case he's about to fire. Uh, and then this Hellcat here, I get lucky. His shot bounces off my armor, and that's one of the benefits of using, uh, you know, playing a heavy tank with good armor. Usually I want to try to angle myself in that case. I wasn't really angled meaningfully. And then, you know, I mentioned earlier about using consumables. I really wish I had a repair kit because I could fix my uh, damage track. It's affecting my mobility and ability to turn. And so, you know, I back up here and take a shot at this uh, Hetzer's uh, track, hoping to track him. He can't turn and aim at me if he's tracked, but, you know, unfortunately that doesn't pan out. And if I had the consumable, what I would have done is fix the track and then just kite him since we're winning the battle. 
until a friendly tank can come around, just like this M4 is now, and blow that Hetzer away. So, you know, consumables, they only cost 9k for all three for the repair kit, the first aid kit, and the fire extinguisher, but they're great for managing uh, bad situations, especially on maps where there are arties. You know, if you get tracked in a given spot, arties are going to rip you to shreds. It's really important. So for this match, I earned my Mastery Badge First Class, and what this badge means is that the score I got from this battle was higher than the average of the high score of 95% of other players who were playing this tank for the past week. And you can see I did around 1800 damage and took about 2600. It's because, you know, for this tier, the armor is pretty good. It's a pretty beefy tank, and again, you know, if I had that repair kit, you know, maybe I would have made it out of here and survived the battle. So, I will be looking in future videos uh, at two of the child tanks of this KV-1. So the tier 6 uh, KV-1S, a very popular heavy tank, and then also the T-150 because they play differently and their mechanics are different. Let me know what you think about this video, if you have any comments or feedback, and I hope you enjoyed it. Take care.